Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I'm, of course, your host, Anki Boyd, founder of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And today I am super stoked because of my dear friend, easy dating coach, Mike Goldstein, and boy, is he gold, um, here with me today. Hey, Mike. Hi, Antia. Boy, is he gold. That is the best. Thank you for that introduction. So excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited because we're going to talk about today how men test women, five tricky ways he's testing you, and what to do about it. Oh, yes. So really excited about that. You know, so many women are really wondering, right? Was that a test? Uh, was this not a test? You know, is he playing games with me? Uh, how should I respond to it? So we will get to the bottom of this today, ladies. So Mike, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be reading my notes because I want to make sure I got everything right today because this is a long and very serious topic. Um, so I should start off by saying that not all men do all of these. And just because a man is doing one of these things, doesn't mean he's a bad guy or that you need to prove yourself to him or think of it as trying to pass a test. It's more of a subconscious thing that both men and women do to see how compatible a potential partner is. So once again, not a bad guy, but at the same time, every woman watching this, you are a queen. So if the guy is a jerk or you don't like him, screw his test, you're a queen. He's got to meet your test too, right? Uh -huh. um, so obviously he needs to meet your test first, but these are just some examples of how he tests a woman so that you can be a rock star, pass it with uh, flying colors. And then of course, you've got to pass your test as well. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, totally. And I just wanted to say exactly, we women just test as much unconsciously we put men through the ringer. Can they hang with us? Can they stay with our emotionals, ups and downs, <laughs> other things that come their way? So to really think about it, that it's just natural. It's human. We're all, we're all doing it. It's nothing about manipulation. So Mike, what's number one? Yes. Um, number one is how a man tests you. Is he's going to test how much you're willing to do, what your interest level is. Um, you want me to give an example of that, Antia? Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. I remember this was so prevalent in New York City. Like, the quintessential New York single guy that refuses to settle down. This was like his thing. So, New York City, think a guy that lives Upper East Side. Like, dating a woman either somewhere on the lower part of Manhattan or in Hoboken or Brooklyn, Long Island. Like, just anywhere not that near to him. It's like, okay, time to test her, see how much she's willing to do. He plops the date at a bar like five blocks or five minutes from his house, walking. And so she's either got to get on the subway, take a taxi, or find her way up to the bar. And so he's testing you to see if you're just going to acquiesce to his demands of coming to that bar close. And there's varying degrees of this test, right? He may, you know, if it's an hour to, between each other, he may put it at, you know, 20 minutes from, uh, from his house. Or he may do it like the bar right next to his house. So he's testing. And a lot of the time, those men that, um, you know, put it very close is so that if it goes well, he can hop right back to his house and take you with him for a sexual encounter. Or if it goes horribly, he's got a very short commute back. Um, does that all make sense, Antia? Wow, you know what? I had this conversation with some of my clients and they were like, you know, why do I have to drive for an hour? And, and he just like jogs for 10 minutes, you know what I mean? And it's at the same place. And, and uh, so absolutely, and I, I've encountered that too. And I, I feel like, this is like, hey, how about we meeting a little bit closer, you know? Why don't you come to, I don't know, I don't know New York area at all, but, you know, just somewhat come halfway. I don't like the exact halfway because then it almost looks like you're nitpicky about it. So don't do that either, right? So almost like, okay, I measured it. Both of us is four and a half miles, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
but like, hey, you know, would you mind coming a little closer to this area, right? Yeah, so what can a woman do about it? That's what we're talking about now, right? Yeah, I mean, for men watching, if there are any, like, just pick, like, if you're in LA and, like, Culver City is kind of close and you want to be in, like, a somewhat nice town that people will feel safe and comfortable in and it's somewhat halfway, yeah, just go there. Anyway, what to do when he plops it like five minutes from his house and you've got to drive far is you are a value of, uh, ugh, excuse me, you are a woman of high value. So you, what you're going to say to him is, assuming you like him and things are good, like, wow, that place looks cool. You know, it would make me feel so amazing if you'd pick a place a little closer to me so that maybe we're so I don't have to drive as far. That'd be so awesome if you could do that. And then he has to go back to the drawing board. If he gives you pushback, like how serious is this guy about dating you, right? Yeah, and you not being a number, right? Just being like, oh, maybe if I can just meet her, then maybe I can meet somebody else for drinks, maybe at 11, right? Because if it's just five, five blocks from me, hey, I can meet the, friend, the, the, the boys afterwards. Um, Absolutely. And then can you just tell like really quickly what impact that has on a quality man? Like when a woman demands that, what message she is sending to him? Yeah. I mean, immediately I respect a woman that, and I, I, unfortunately, I will admit it. I have done this to women before. And the reason I do this test is one, maybe I'm unsure about her. Like I'm going because I like, I have a, an old consulting phrase. If you don't know, go. So if you're not sure, if it could be your life partner, you go. But maybe you've got an inkling that maybe this isn't the one. So you're like, eh, I'd rather drive 10 minutes than drive 30 for a maybe. So that's why he did. I'm sorry, what was your question? Uh, no. Uh, so the question was, what is the message that, that he receives when she steps into her value and actually says, hey, why don't you drive a little closer and, and so on? Oh, it's so sexy. It does, like, if it's a woman that I'm interested in, I'm like, whoa, her value rises. Because one, she, she not only, like, is obviously has a high standard, but two, she communicated it effectively. Like, oh, it'd make me feel so good if you could just pick a place closer. When she executes, executes it gracefully, I'm just get wide eyed and I'm like, whoa, she's masterful at this. She knows what she's doing. I'm in. Because like, <laughs> imagine when things come up in life, like she's going to handle them, but do it gracefully in a way that brings me closer instead of, you know, it's like, oh my, she's, she's scary. No, that, that feels safe and feels good. And if I'm not interested in the woman, it just causes me to not go on the date which is great because women, you don't want to waste your time on a guy that doesn't like you. So basically what you're saying, it's like, it's a win-win either way. Cause you're like either find out, you're not wasting your time. You're not getting on a taxi for an hour for a guy that is not interested in you anyways. Maybe you hook up, maybe one night said. Um, so it's actually a great filter, if you will, to really step into your it's problem. It's an amazing, value. amazing filter. It's like a no brainer. It's a win-win, absolutely. So Mike, what is number two? Oh, thank you, Antia. Um, number two is, can I say what is on my mind? Whether it be humor, vulnerability, it's ultimately, do you accept me? Is it safe to be myself? So a man is going to maybe say a joke that's like a little farther than, you know, politically correct. Or maybe he's going to tell you about his past. Um, you know, my thing uh, many years ago when I first started my business was, um, I, I'm obviously a dating and relationship coach. When I first started dating, I was very nervous and scared. So I would tell people I'd run a consulting practice because I didn't want them to know what I did. And eventually I felt very inauthentic. And I'm like, all right, this is bullshit. Like, I love what I do. Let me just tell them I'm a, a dating coach. And I was super insecure and it was very vulnerable for me to share that because um, when I lived in New York City and, and, and anywhere, like women want someone who's financially successful that they feel safe and secure with as a quality. And a lot of women perceived that I didn't have any money. And to be honest, when I first started the business, um, I will be vulnerable and share with you. My first year, 
without um, any of my other side jobs, just dating coaching, I made $7,000 in my first year, which obviously is awful. <laughs> um, fortunately, I had a good amount of savings, so it didn't matter, but for, in my situation, but that was being vulnerable. Like, are you accepting that I've started this new enterprise that I intend to grow, and this is where I'm at right now, you know, I can still like take you out to dinner or whatever. Um, but then it was like, do you accept me? Do you accept the path that I'm on? That I'm not in corporate America. I started a company and I have a weird job. And men are going to do that in their own way. They all, this is my lens. This was my truth. Other men have other issues. Um, does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. Because if you have like a superficial woman, who's like ready to judge you or she has like, you know, needs to have the nine to five or you needs to have the, the hundred thousand a year. I mean, you know, like some women, they have those standards, right? And they don't, they don't see like the potential and like, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm meeting this man. There's like an essence to him. There's a drive to him. There's a personality to him. That's what you're getting at, right? Yeah, um, I think so. And then, so women, like in terms of this test that he's doing, they can decide whether to accept it or not, right, Antia? And then, okay. in this specific case, like if he says something that's totally against your like top five things you need in a partner, then maybe in this test you opt out of it and kind of like, oh, this isn't my guy. Right. You know, if you're a, like, for example, when I was starting, if you're a woman that's already like got her career and doesn't have time to wait for me to build my business at that point, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with me. It's just the timing issue. Like he's just starting. I need someone already finished. I can't do it. Um, but if there's other things, like maybe you want to be accepting or if there's other baggage, like if you're dating in your fifties and sixties, there's going to be baggage. But then accept him but then ask questions like hey now that you've noticed this is an issue what have you done well how are you working on it how are you growing what's your plan and if they've got like this amazing answer it could really draw you close and be like whoa this guy's done his homework i feel like we could go somewhere that's exactly right that's what i meant right you really want to see what to drive what's the trajectory because i mean when I met Brody, you know what I mean? It was like, I, I saw the potential. I'm like, I don't know what you're doing here. You, you're like, you're gonna go some places. I can tell you that. And a woman who's really connected and intuitive, she will see that in a man, right? Like, absolutely. She absolutely That's a good will. point. Like you can see Brody's just so driven. Like, let's just talk about the background. Like, look at this decor Brody built of where she's sitting. That, that thing behind her is backlit. That's insane. Like, they've got the most beautiful background because Brody's a genius. Like, I love this guy. Oh, uh, yeah, he's, he's, you know what he is? He's a life optimizer. So he's always like, what else can I optimize? You know, we have like our cell phones on gray so that we don't get addicted to our phones. So we don't waste our time. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, exactly. But that's like a woman who's like connected to herself and intuitive. She will pick that up because she will know what to leave sort of like to decide and not take appearance, appearance at face value. Yeah. So what's the, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. I was Sorry. just gonna say for, for women, like it's okay though, if you, if it doesn't work for your standard, you uh -huh. can opt out just sure. to be clear. All uh, right, keep going. I, I love that, yes, absolutely. Emancipation, totally, absolutely. You have choice, you know what I mean? You don't have to, you know, just like talk yourself into it. Thanks for adding that on, Mike. So what is number three? Oh yeah, look at the notes. Um, Woo! <laughs> your tolerance for his independence. Mm. Um, this one's an extra sensitive one for me. Mm. And I'm probably skewed a little bit from some past baggage. But this is very important uh, to me and to all men. As a single person, whether you're female or male, you have supreme independence to do whatever the heck you want. Every day, it's your choice. And in some relationships that other people have dealt with, you kind of get restricted within your relationship. And some people have that baggage. Not everyone, but a healthy relationship, there's no restriction, there's abundance. And instead of like right now as a single person with my freedom, I have this life. But now when I have my partner, we have like this amazing 
all expansive life where it's like, not only do I do the things I love already, like play soccer and blah, 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 but now like I've got my partner and we're going traveling to Sedona and Utah and uh, France and we're just going all over the world and it's just, the world becomes our playground together. And it's not like you don't have, you stop playing soccer. No, you do everything. And so like this abundant sense of freedom, does that make sense? Oh yeah, I mean, I feel what you're really talking about here is this, this idea of the in, true interdependence where, you know what I mean? You have your couple identity, but you also have a very strong individual identity. That's, you know what I mean? Uh, that has like very clear boundaries. Let me tell you a story, uh, if it's all right. Go for it. You might've been a part of this-ish. Or, I don't remember. Anyway, um, I met this super cute girl, um, woman, excuse me, not a girl. She's a woman, beautiful woman down in Newport Beach um, at a bar. I was actually with Helena, Helena Hart, the other dating coach. Uh, so I meet this beautiful blonde and we go on a few dates and I'm realizing that this may be something. So early on, I plant the seed that my friends from New York are going to come visit me in LA. But the dude is super busy executive and he's, only he, the only time he ever takes off, he's on the in the like executive team. He doesn't take any days off, but he's like, I got a three day weekend, uh, Valentine's Day weekend. So that's the only time I'm coming to see you. I'm like, oh, Valentine's Day weekend. I'm a love coach, but uh, I miss my best friend. All right, come on. So I preemptively told her like a month in advance. I'm like, listen, one of my best friends is coming Valentine's Day weekend. I'm just warning you, I won't be free that night. And so that was me testing her. What was she going to do? Was she going to yell at me, say Valentine's Day is meant for women? Or was she going to be cool? Or was she going to be like the highest value woman and say like, you know, that's great. Have fun with your friend. But you're making it up to me, sir. You're taking me out on, you know, the, a few days after, after he leaves. And you're going to show me a, a good Valentine's Day. I love that. Yes. Yeah, so you still bring in a little bit of sass, right? So what, what did she end up doing? Um, she was, she just was cool. She was just like, yeah, all right. No problems. It was early on. So she, she was pretty easy. Okay. Okay. So that's, that goes a little bit into what should women do about it? So do you have some more to say about that? What women should do about how they can really, yeah, just really support that independent part of the man and make the man feel safe in his independence. That's also what you were touching on. Honestly, like, um, you know, I, it sounds silly, but men kind of need to earn their lady. And I hate to say it, but there's something about earning a woman that like really like, oh, I just like, you know, I got her, I did it. And it, what she could have done, and I'm sure she wanted to spend some time together, is she should have said like, dude, go have a great time with your friend. But like, I can't wait for you to show me an amazing time like a few days later. Like you're going to make up that Valentine's Day. And oh yeah, Mike, we're going to have some fun too. Trust me. So it's like, ooh, like she could even be like, and I've got some special lingerie for, you know, when you make up Valentine's Day for me. Like something fun and playful, but at the same time, it's like, Mike, you better freaking get your ass on Google find a restaurant, like you better go get some flowers, get some chocolate, like you better go earn this lady because she's not just waiting at the door. She's a beautiful blonde woman that has options. Like you better get your shit together. But also she's kind of guiding me to that. Ah, oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, totally. It's like this challenge, right? It's like this, this like, this like uh, marriage between the two, right? It's like one is really like challenging the man um, but authentically, not pretending. See, that's the other piece too, right? It's a whole different video. Um, but awesome. Yeah. So what's number four? Oh, number four. Number four. Um, Quattro. <laughs> they, um, <laughs> testing boundaries and poking at the boundaries. Um, this one happens all the time to my clients which is shocking. I don't know what these guys are thinking, but anyway, um, let me tell you a story. Um, so one of my clients is out in Sedona. Um, and she keeps, 
like it's hard for her to date there. The, I think the population of Sedona, I don't know, like 10,000 or something, except when it's tourist season. But you know, you want to date local. Anyway, so she keeps dating people in Phoenix, which I think is about 150 miles away. And then it's like a Zoom date, and then they finally meet. And these guys that are coming up to see her are like, well, if I'm driving this far, um, is it okay if I sleep at your place? I'm like, what? Like, push, like, well, no, I don't sleep with men or, like, I don't feel comfortable having you in my house, like, on our first date. Um, so, like, these men kind of pushing out the boundary. And then, like, when they show up and they're on the date, like, so, can I come over? Or, like, what are we doing? It's like, no. <laughs> Sorry, what do you think about that, Antia? Yeah, I know, right? Actually, you know, it's so interesting. On the other hand, you really have this comparison where people really, I mean, that's what I hear from some of my clients. It's really like, if he likes you, he's going to fly you out. He's going to pay for your plane ticket. He's going to pay for your hotel. If he's a gentleman, so you have the whole other side, right? Where it's not only, is he not asking you to stay over, but he's going to fly you over or he's going to, you know what I mean? Pay for the hotel himself so you know because the idea is almost like saying oh i sacrificed something for you and now you need to kind of like make it up to me and it's almost like saying i'm not happy to sacrifice that for you right it's like you need to you know you need to come towards me um but in a way that mm, i don't know in the beginning stages of a relationship it's like the boundaries are it, it's just a little too fast you know what i mean and it's like it's relatively inappropriate like to to do something like that you know what i mean I, I would rather have them like say from the get-go i don't know let's meet halfway i don't know if there's anything halfway between phoenix and Sedona. <laughs> let's meet like in the you know in the desert um <laughs> the bunny and the snake you know um or like arrange something hey i come to you next time you come to me or something like that you know what i mean so then that way you know what i mean and you take both hotels so i think that should be more some sort of arrangement like that. But sure. if a man is really interested, and this is, this is of course your territory, because uh, you would know a lot better than me, but in my opinion, if a man is really interested, he's happy to make the drive, he's gonna connect it with like another outside hike or something else, you know what I mean? Um, explore a new area and, and get a hotel. Yeah, I mean, if the guy is interested, he's gonna, he's gonna go nuts. Listen, when I was really interested, I dated a woman that lived in Buffalo when I lived in uh, New Jersey. That was a oh. six or seven hour drive or an hour and a half flight. Right. I, I did it. I flew it. And if I wanted her to come here, sometimes I paid for her flight. And I've driven, you know, for women that I was interested in, I've went down all the way to San Diego. Like people make the trip when they're into it. If you haven't gotten to the point where you're sure if you're into it, like you can do another Zoom call and make it easy on both of your lives. Now, on top of him testing you on boundaries and poking, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with this guy, just to be clear. Like if he, for example, is maybe trying to move sexually a little too fast, maybe that's because he's decided he likes you. Men, on average, know they like you by date two if they're really into you. And he might be like, all right, I like you. I'm ready to go. Like, it's time to have sex because I've already decided you're my girl, you know, you're my woman. And, but you are like, whoa, I haven't made that decision yet. So if he's being sexual, he's testing you to see where you are in terms of holding what your boundary is. So maybe your boundary is like, I don't have sex until I'm in a relationship or until I feel safe. So he's wondering how you're going to handle it. I know I'm very curious. Like when I'm sexually attracted to a woman and I know I want to be with her, like, of course, I'm going to try to like, I'm going to come towards her. I'm going to come towards her sexually, but I have the utmost respect for her when she says, Hey, I'm not ready, but not when, but only if she does it correctly. Like Mike, like I like you, I don't do it till X. Not like Mike, what the heck are you doing? Cause that's, then you're rejecting me saying like, you know, I don't like, you know, my interpretation of it is I'm not into you, mm -hmm. but you may not mean that, but what you have to say so that it's ver very clear is like, Hey, I do like you. I'm not ready to be sexual yet, mm -hmm. yeah. but down the road, we're going to have some fun. Just not right now. <laughs> yeah, totally. And you know, 
And this is really like acknowledging the wild man, like not making him wrong, not emasculating him. Like it's really, you know what I mean? Like it's almost like I drop into a different part inside of me when I'm relating to the wild man. Like, you know what I mean? I see you, right? And I appreciate that because that very same wild man, sex can be amazing. He's going to protect you. So there's many different things that come from this amazing energy if you're, if you make it right, right? And if you like also consider that your man think but every 10 seconds, the word sex or some image or something's coming up. So also having this like compassion that like, hey, even if it came out a little sideways or slightly inappropriate, I have this conversation all the time with my clients when they are online dating, which of course you're the expert in. Uh, I'm certainly not ladies. I'm just going to say that right out of the gate here. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, it's like, well, what do I do when they make those like sexual comments? And I'm like, well, I mean, you know, they, they think about sex every whatever it is, 10 seconds or 30 seconds. So can we talk about that just for a second? Since we're on the topic, how to navigate yeah, that? A compliment. Yeah. Take it for a compliment. Shift your mindset, not of like, oh my God, this guy must think I'm a piece of meat and like, what a jerk. Yeah. And like, why is he leading with, you know, his penis? Why can't he lead with his brain and his heart and get to know me? Yeah. That's not it. He's saying, wow, you're beautiful and wow, I'm into you. Reframe it. Mm. and then come back to him and say you're great so far let's refocus like I need to feel it in here and I need to feel it up here and I need to feel safe before I can feel anything down there mm -hmm. so let's slow down but so far things are going well and if things are going poorly be like well listen I don't think things are going well let's you know let's <laughs> let's go a different direction <laughs> oh my god i love that so much but you know what brody brody was on it like from day one and he met me and you know who would have been up to him everything would have happened on day one like so it, it men know you know what i mean and so we can't and thank god i had done all my forgiveness work and all my healing work around all of that right so that i didn't make it wrong so i think it's super important what you uh what you talked about here mike for sure yeah it's not wrong no it's not it's like it also creates that chemistry and that tension and that like you know that also keeps it alive too i feel like if there's no tension and no activation right like then what's the glue how how's this continuing you know what i mean if it's just like staying kind of like neutralizes and and falls flat almost right because it becomes really just eh, just matter of fact you know whatever i could take it or leave it like so that there's nothing it's just like boring it's like what what like what is this like are we just like friends <laughs> yeah right exactly exactly so um so i know we have one more one more left so what's number five? Oh yes <laughs> how well um they fit into your world AKA when you, they introduce, a man is testing you when he introduces you to his friends, family, his passions, and his interests. Um, so let's, let's look from my lens. So this is, of course, going to be skewed on my opinion. But my thing is, uh, like meeting my parents, for example. Thankfully, they're still alive. Um, for some reason, the old Jewish mother thing, a young Jewish mother, excuse me, um, she doesn't get along with everybody. And my mom is the greatest, obviously. Like, I love her. And she's, like me, very sociable and I think very easy to get along with and can talk to anyone, can talk to a brick wall. Um, but, yeah, I want to see if she gets along with uh, – it, it just makes it so much easier, um, you know, to go home, to spend the holidays. Like, if they got along, and that's a test, like, it's like, ah, oh, this is going to be easy. Not like, oh, there's going to be like tension and I'm going to have to like separate the two of them. So, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know what? And I also believe a little bit that you, the environment is also an extension of your essence and your energy. So, so ultimately, I actually think it will also clash energetically or emotionally because there's something where that's your mom and this, those are your values and you know, so down the line, you, you, it's not going to work out anyway. So great. But they say, right, you're not just marrying your wife, you're, you're marrying the in-laws too. 
Yeah. And in my specific case, like my friends are my family. And I happen, I'm noticing that my friends typically like kind of have the similar energy levels to me, um, similar interests, similar values. So it's very easy for us to not at like pretty much never fight. And so then when you bring someone else in, if they have those aligned values, those aligned interests, it all just meshes perfectly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, versus someone who's got different things, it's, it's kind of awkward. And, and I will tell you, like with Brody and I, I always say what saves us, even when, when we have something like short term where, you know what I mean, I have a moment, it's like those combined values and those com combined, I almost call it like an essence where you just have that certain sense of like looking at the world, right? It's, it's just this incredible glue that like I think has to be there. It's a foundation to a relationship. I, I really believe that's why most people get divorced, you know, because the values are eventually... I have friends right now, Mike, they're married and that's, uh, the values are not there. And right now, particularly, it's really showing because we're in a very interesting time <laughs> where we're really oh, yeah. becoming more, more, more polarized, right? You want to be on the, you want to be aligned. It's You're so right. I mean, that is the glue. Like um, I had a fiance two years ago and mm -hmm. uh, we broke up, but we had so many things in common. We love doing the same stuff. And we just had so much fun together and it was like, it was good. Yeah. But then some of the values weren't totally uh, meshed and that's what ultimately brought us apart because they weren't aligned. So yeah. when those big issues came up, we looked at our value system and she'd be over there and I'd be over here and I'd be like, oh boy, we can't find common ground. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's the saying, right? Show me your friends. And I tell you who you are. So it's, it's a good, but isn't it also, so we're talking a little bit about what a woman is um, supposed to do about it. So do you have anything else that what a woman is supposed to do about that one? I'd be cognizant of it. Um, like, first of all, like, I think every woman on here is going to go in with their best behavior when they meet friends and family. Um, but I would use it as like a test for yourself. Like, who are, who is their parent? Like the parents really dictate a lot of what they've learned in terms of relationships. Um, so like going to look um, at their parents is just like, it's so much fun, at least for me as a dating and relationship coach. Like I love meeting my partner's parents because I see how their relationship dynamic is. And so whatever they do, you know, my partner probably learned it from childhood. And so then they bring that into the relationship. And so it gives me understanding. So maybe if there is something that I don't necessarily love about them, at least I can understand why. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully she's getting the why as well. And then as a team, if it's something we want to work on, we can. Or at least I'm like, oh, she's getting like X because of she's got that. For, she learned that. Yeah. Okay. I understand it. I accept it. We're fine. Let's move forward. This is going to come up perpetually but at least i understand why it's happening and so we can we can work around with it does that make sense mm -hmm. oh 100 percent. i mean when i met brody's parents um i definitely paid attention to everything right because like you see the dynamics between them the values like anything any beliefs around anything i'm like okay i can i can do this i can do this this is this is good those are good grounded values oregon Oregonian values, right? <laughs> Whatever that means. But yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Should I tell a quick story? Sure. Well, okay. Um, so one of my uh, partners, um, her, uh, her parents, they were not sharers at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like a heart on my sleeve. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Mm -hmm. um, that's who I am. And these, they were the exact opposite. They didn't share anything, like just nothing. It wasn't like, I, you know, they could say, I love you. And these were the nicest, greatest people, but there was never like those tough questions or the, you know, it was always just like, let's get from point A to point B. It wasn't like, how are you feeling? Why are you feeling that? Like nothing really deep. Right. Yeah. And so because of that, my partner never really wanted to go that deep and never wanted to share what she was feeling, why she was feeling it. So I never fully understood her. And even when I'd ask her questions, it was like, you know, 
like that stoic man you think of that's kind of like, oh, I'm good, strong, mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. I'm sad. Why? I don't know. So I couldn't really get past that layer to really get in mm -hmm. to, her, to fully mm -hmm. see her. And that was because she learned, you know, be tough. And she was great at sports. So like, you know, she scratched her knee, like, let's get on with it. If she, you know, hurt herself, I'm good. Let's go. Yeah. So she's always kind of like that tough woman uh -huh. that was never going to show pain, show anything. Mm. And then I wasn't able to be a man and kind of support her, help her. Mm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and then it's like painful because when you then also see it from the parents, you're like, you're done. You know what I mean? It's such an intrinsic value unless she wants to change it. It's an unconscious competence for her. So where the heck do you go from there? I'm sure that was like a good indication for you to be like, yeah, that was, that's not going to go anywhere. And don't get me wrong, like, there's a lot of great qualities of that. Yeah, of course. It just, so, like, yeah, it just some of it didn't mesh because I'm one who wants to go deeper. That's the idea. It's, it's more just that it's different. Because if you mm -hmm. wanted to just be like, I'm fine, too. I'm like, you know what I mean? You fall down, you get up, right? And it would have been great. That's what I always tell my women. It's really just, it doesn't matter. There's no right and wrong. That's just your way. And if it doesn't work with your way, then... Then what do you do, right? But yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so awesome. So we have all five, five ways how men test women, you know, those tricky ways that we are oftentimes not aware of and how we can actually pass the test, right? Because, you know, so many women, sometimes I have like a phone call that literally will tell me, Aren't you? I, I don't think I passed the test. I mean, we will say this, you know, I think I got like, to, I, I think something happened, you know, <laughs> I think I, I, <laughs> I failed. <laughs> I failed. I got enough. Um, well, so awesome. Anything else that you want to add on um, at the end of this video, like before we go into also your juicy offer that you have for the women who want to continue this journey with you? I just say, um, you know, he's got to pass your test. Remember that you are the queen. Make sure he meets your standard. If he meets your standard, don't stress, but like be on your best behavior and you can rock the, all these tests. Um, but ultimately, like if you guys are meant to be together, it's gonna happen and you get, and don't worry if it doesn't. If your values don't align, there's so many other men and be in a place of abundance, not scarcity, just leave the relationship, go find another one and don't stick around too long because it's gonna get harder and harder to leave. So just get out of there if it's not lined up. Because that's why our divorce rate's so high, because we just like, honestly, we use chemistry and, and fun, and we go, ooh, that must be my partner. But it's not working. We stink at this. So just move on if it doesn't feel like it's easy. Totally. And, and now, or, or we stay together because we want to ride it out till the end. So we're already feeling it's not working. But we really have to know until we're really like completely hate each other or like completely something bad happens. And then... We're going to, you know, then we're going to actually file for divorce for sure. Well, Mike, what's your gift that you have for the women who want to like learn more about you and dive into this work and explore this more? Yeah, I'm really excited to give this gift away. Um, so my gift is a New York Times bestselling article or New York Times actually most read article ever, ever read. Um, online. Yeah, it's about five years old, the piece. It's from a scientific study done 20 years ago. They had this hypothesis that they could take two strangers and give them progressively more intimate questions and they would fall in love. And why I love this experiment is it freaking works. People fell in love. People got married. People are still together 20 years later. Um, I've used this thing on myself three times. It's awesome. Um, I, you know, you're not necessarily going to fall in love, but you're going to get to know your partner. I've been using this for um, about four or five years. And I let clients do it on like the third date, the fifth date, whatever. And immediately you kind of see if your values are aligned or if they're not. And you kind of get to know each other on a much more strategic way instead of just being like, what do you watch on Netflix? Like that doesn't matter. These are much more pertinent questions um you can ask them anytime you want or you can have a fun date night over some wine you can do it over zoom if you need to 
whatever you want to do, but it's going to get you the information a lot more strategically. Um, so Antia will put the link for you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so passionate about this gift because I really, it drives me nuts that the divorce rate is so high. So if we do this early, we can see if you have the right partner. Or if you've been married and you like your partner and you've been married for 10, 20, 30 years, great way to re-get to know each other is with these questions. I've had uh, married people, married 30, 40 years, do this and they love it. It's really a fun date night. Um, and I've done it three times myself. So obviously I liked it enough to do it a few more times. Um, so enjoy. Awesome. Those are the 36 questions, I think, right? Um, and they will be right below um, this video as well, ladies. Mike, it's been such a joy. I, I love your stories. I, I'm always like so enticed and, um, and engaged in, in this conversation of like, you know, how men and women are interact with each other on such an unconscious level and how they can do that much more effectively. Thank you for having me. So much fun. Always great to be with you and great questions. Nailed awesome. it. Awesome, awesome. All right, ladies, this is it for today. So go ahead and digest this juicy information and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.